Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD, specifically rumours of Polaris 30. So, as many of you know, NVIDIA have released the RTX 20 series of cards. But even before that, AMD did not really have a competitive answer to NVIDIA's high-end cards, such as the GTX 1080 Ti. But what they did do is compete rather well in the mainstream segment. The RX 570 and 580, and before that, of course, the 470 and 480, were compelling in terms of the price-performance ratio. But with NVIDIA slowly threatening to trickle out a new series of GPUs, and with Pascal also receiving price cuts, what are AMD to do? After all, from what we understand, Navi is not going to see the light of day, at least on store shelves, until some point next year. And Vega 7NM, also known as Vega 20, has been all but confirmed to not be for gamers. Instead, it's going to be for HPC orientated functionality. So that would be deep learning and stuff, which obviously means that it's not really going to be fit for purpose for gamers. It's going to be too expensive. So what are AMD to do? Well, short of putting out Navi early, the best thing AMD could do is release a refresh of Polaris. And these have been consistent rumours. We've heard about them for months now. They are exactly what you would expect. We would see uh, Polaris released on a smaller process, for example, 12nm, and we would also see higher clock speeds because of that possibly better memory, either due to the R5X or possibly R6. And in turn, this would allow AMD to put out better performance, but perhaps most crucially of all, keep a nice competitive pricing. Therefore, we have yet more rumours concerning this, and these stem once again from the well-known website Chip Hill. A user is claiming that we will see Polaris 30 released over the next month or two at most. In fact, the earlier is most likely going to be accurate according to this leaker, if these rumours are accurate. And these GPUs will put out, let's say, 15 to 20% better performance, at least uh, according to the die shrink information, compared to current generation cards. So where will this put the performance of these GPUs? Well, it's very hard to accurately gauge because obviously we don't have benchmarks and the, ac and the leaker is not giving exact information like saying, well, this number of compute units with this clock speed and this type of RAM, but let's assume it's the 20% mark. It still wouldn't put out the same level of performance of, let's say, Pascal and the GTX 1070, but what it would do, assuming the pricing was right, would give AMD a nice GPU to tackle the mainstream segment. This card would be perfect for 1080p gaming without any question. I would also most likely do a pretty darn good job of titles at 1440p. It of course wouldn't be able to handle those games at 144Hz, but 60fps at 1440p would certainly be well within the GPU's capability for a great number of games. This of course would tide things over for AMD until we saw Navi. Now, what are my thoughts on this? Well, in theory, anyway, it does make sense for AMD to release a refresh of Polaris because, well, they don't really have anything else to release right now. But then again, it is additional R&D budget money. This is, of course, without question. Also, it's going to put uh, extra time for manufacturing and all of that. So that is one possibility. But holiday season is coming up. And yes, the RTX 2080, 2070, and 2080 Ti are impressive, but they're also very, very, very different market segments to what we're seeing from, what would it be called, the RX 600 series? RX, I don't know, 590? Who knows? But regardless of that, they are very different pricing segments. Instead, AMD are most likely concerned with GPUs such as the GTX 1060 and the 1070, because those are cards that it can compete against, not only in pricing, but also performance. And don't forget, cards such as the RTX 2060 or the GTX 2060, or whatever it ends up being called, is not going to appear on shelves from NVIDIA until next year. So that does give uh, AMD several months to be able to sell to the mainstream audience and compete in that market. And assuming it didn't cost them a whole bunch of cash in R&D, 
it does make sense in some ways. I wouldn't be surprised perhaps if we did see additional compute units, but most likely that's not going to happen. Most likely this is going to be a clock speed increase. We're going to see uh, additional uh, uh, memory speeds as well. Obviously, memory bandwidth would go up. And one thing we do know is Polaris is constrained by memory bandwidth. So it's possible, therefore, that AMD might choose to do this. But don't forget, these rumors do stem from a forum. So huge grain of salt. But just also don't be surprised if we do see the GPUs. Unquestionably, one of the areas AMD are putting a lot of its eggs in right now is HP. PC. High performance computing is incredibly lucrative. We've seen runaway success from the company with Epic, and of course, they're releasing 7NM Vega, as I just mentioned, for HPC usage. But it's taking time, of course, for customers to start migrating over to AMD products. But there is one helping hand that AMD have actually had recently that perhaps many have found unexpected. That's Intel. The manufacturing shortages that we've discussed several times now on the channel on Intel's 14NM process are rampant, and Intel are doing all the tricks in the book. It's shifting some of its products back to 22NM. It's opening up new fabs, possibly even uh, tasking TSMC to produce chips. But these things take time to come into play. It's not like they can just snap their fingers and things happen. So what we're seeing instead is certain manufacturers, certain uh, server manufacturers, start shifting their suggestion to moving to AMD. According to DigiTimes, HP, Hewlett Packard, are one of those companies, suggesting to its, cons its customer base that yes, you should possibly uh, consider AMD products because of the Intel shortage. It's kind of a weird way that the industry works in this, and obviously AMD are going to take all of the help it can get in the short term. It's also really helping their stock prices. Don't forget, it was only a couple of years ago that certain uh, analysts were calling AMD stock overvalued at just six US dollars. Yeah, many of those are being forced to eat their words with no ketchup and not even a little bit of salt. Instead, they are now having to see the price of those stocks go over 30 US dollars, which is insane. You know, more power to AMD, though. I have to say that their Ryzen processes in particular have been extremely good for, you know, desktop. But Fred Ripper and, of course, Epic are also incredibly competitive and changing their landscape. And it's good for us as well, because with the ninth generation of processors coming out from Intel, obviously more choice is only a good thing. It's going to be fascinating to see the next several months and to see how things unfold, particularly when Intel can get its uh, manufacturing down to pat, and AMD start to roll out 7NM CPUs. First of all, of course, to Epic, and then later on to customers with desktops. By far, one of the biggest changes Windows 8 bought over Windows 7 was more focus on touch screen displays. And we saw that, and with the Metro UI, there were a lot of complaints, but for certain devices, tablets and so on, it was a rather handy feature. But it also is a bit of a security risk, at least according to the findings of one researcher. I'm going to put a link to his blog in the video description. But when you enable the handwriting functionality of uh, Windows, later versions of Windows, it creates a list. And this is waitlist.dat. Now this is a data file which starts to actually record inputs of your system. And it's not just in Windows 8 either, it's in 8.1 and Windows 10, and you could find it uh, on the path that is listed on screen. And we actually have information being stored on this by numerous different applications. In fact, the chap in question claims that we can actually see various emails that he has sent and received over the past couple of days appear right there in that list. And this is not just a claim either, it's been tested by several other individuals, and you can actually check it out yourself if you do have this function enabled. If you do not have the handwriting function enabled though, this will not be there. A small update concerning Nintendo, and guess what? They are working on a Nintendo 64 classic console. I know that's probably a bit of a shock, so I'm going to give you a few moments to recover. 
After all, the NES Classic was a runaway success. The SNES Classic, or SNES Classic if you prefer, was also a very popular system. And of course, Sony now are releasing the PlayStation Classic. So obviously it would make sense that Nintendo are following suit here and releasing the N64 Classic. Unfortunately, games are not listed, yet alone the system actually being confirmed, but this has been found on a couple of EU patent filings. Uh, I wonder what games we're going to be seeing. Mario 64, the Zelda, they're probably shoe-ins. But do let me know in the comments what you would like to see on a classically designed Nintendo 64. Finally, we're going to discuss another set of rumours concerning the RTX 20 series of cards. But these are very different. These are not concerning performance or any of that stuff. Instead, they're concerning pricing, specifically on pricing tariffs in the United States of America. This information comes to us from the website WCCF Tech, and so far it has not been verified by other sources, but they claim, according to their sources within certain AIBs, that they will be hit with the tariffs that uh, the US are placing on Chinese products. One example that was given would be some MSI products. So, for example, the RTX 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio card would raise a rather hefty amount. It would raise from 1231 US dollars to 1310 US dollars. The vanilla RTX 2080 Duke, a gigabyte OC model, would raise $840 to $890 US dollars. The Ventus 8 gigabyte OC model would raise from $830 to $880, and so on and so on. Now, there is good news and there's bad news. Once again, citing D uh, WCCF Tech, certain uh, vendors, for example, MSI, will be able to somewhat sidestep these tariffs. How can they do that? Well, in the case of MSI, for example, they have Taiwanese manufacturing capabilities. So rather than manufacture in China, they can simply migrate their manufacturing to uh, Taiwan for the sake of argument, and therefore it's a way for them to sidestep these tariffs. The problem comes, though, that not all AIBs have that luxury. Certain AIBs, such as Zotac, well, they produce their GPUs in China. So we're in a kind of a sticky situation with companies like Zotac, or at least Zotac are in the sticky situation. They've got a couple of options. The first option is that they can just eat the cost. That means either they get smaller margins or we cough up more cash. The other option, of course, is that they could start fishing, fishing around and start creating their GPUs somewhere else. But obviously this stuff takes time. It's not something that they can just snap their fingers and it happens. So at least in the short term, MSI and Gigabyte will raise their prices, but they can probably eat the cost for now. Maybe they might not go up as much as uh, perhaps WCCF are mentioning, because it's possible that in the short term they could eat the cost, and in the longer term it doesn't really matter, because once again they've shifted the manufacturing to somewhere else. I know what you're going to say, well, what if you are not in the United States? What about if you're in Canada? What about if you're in the EU, Great Britain, and so on? Well, that remains unclear. It's possible, for example, my home country is the United Kingdom, as you probably can guess, well, it's possible that the cards might just go up in price because the retailers are like, eh, why not? That would suck. At least in the short term, it's possible that the pricing could go up. It's also possible that the pricing might, well, remain how it is or even possibly go down slightly. It might even be slightly good news for countries outside of the US because what could happen is AIBs like Zotac could say, well, in the short term, we can't compete with those cards. Uh, so what we can do is really focus on the EU. We can focus a lot more in the UK and perhaps they can do better deals and allocate more stock to those. So perhaps it would, at least in the next several months, alleviate some of the shortage of the RTX 20 series of GPUs. What about if you're not interested in the RTX 20 series? What if you're interested instead in purchasing Pascal? Well, we all know that Pascal is a finite quantity. It is not going to last forever. NVIDIA are starting to shut down the manufacturing of it, and so on and so on. So whatever inventory they have left, particularly on some of the cards, is what they have left. Other GPUs, such as the GTX 1060, have not been replaced yet. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, that's probably not going to happen until some point next year. 
So in the case of GPUs that have already been manufactured, the good news is that we most likely will not see a price hike. So in other words, if they've already been imported, in theory, the retailers will not hike the prices. But what might happen in relation to Pascal or what have you, is we might see the prices go up anyway as shortages start to happen as the cards become EOL. But as always with any supply and demand, it's incredibly hard to predict exactly what customers will buy, let alone what retailers will do and how the market will happen, how the market and how the market will adjust. If I were you, and this is my personal advice, purchase what if I were you and you are interested in purchasing the RTX 20 series of cards, consider it buying it right now before the prices hike. But of course, there's still not that much data yet on performance and it is still quite early. So I do understand as well the notion of waiting. But uh, full disclosure, we do have an Amazon affiliate link, which is available in the video description if you do want to purchase. That's not to say that you should use the link, but it would help us out if you do. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video, found it somewhat informative. If you have, you can click that button. If not, you can click that button. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.